Hello and welcome to today's historic best of three deck tech and gameplay video on Red Deck Wins. Red Deck Wins is technically an update to an older version that I've done before, but in reality it's just my favorite deck to play. It's what I feel the absolute most comfortable with by a wide margin and not to, you know, uh, to, to badmouth Wizards R&D too terribly much. Um, the murders at Karlov Manor, literally one card excited me in that whole set. And I have already done a week of testing on a deck that just isn't going to work with that one card. And there's nothing else that gets me excited to try things at all with that set. So, until the release of the next actual set, or maybe if we get some sort of supplemental product or cool alchemy cards, we're going to run through the backlog of lists that I've had that might get updates and stuff since we don't have any new cards to to use for like inspirations for new decks. But anywho, Red Deck Wins is a we'll say heavily creature based aggressive deck that wants to hit the ground running with its various creatures very early on on turn one and hit a turn two or hit, or hit a two drop into a three drop you want to hit the ground running and you don't really ever want to stop or let up you just want to throw our various sources of damage be it creature sorry be it creatures or non-creatures you just want to throw everything in our opponent's face and try and rush them down as quickly as possible the classic example of uh, a mono red deck or any really aggro deck in general if our deck doesn't kill them by turn let's say five or six then really you're probably not going to win so to do that yeah we have loads of creatures the occasional burn spells sprinkled in which can be used to either go at our opponent's face or to get rid of opposing blockers and a little bit of card draw to sort of hold the whole thing together cards like the tectonic reformation light of the stage and chandra though chandra is really just a good top end threat land base equally very simple a load of mountains, four Ramanop ruins as basically eight free damage, a Sokanzan as another form of a basically an upgraded mountain, a couple dens of the bugbear for a creature land to deal with flooding, and a nice little tech piece of Shatter Skull Smashing and the Hammer Pass dual face card as basically an upgrade to a mountain. Where, yes, you could argue with both the Hammer Pass and the ruins, that's it's not strictly an upgrade because of the loss of life, but we're an aggressive deck, and we don't mind that. Since we're looking to, again, end the, turn, end the game by turn 4 or 5 anyway. Sideboard, all very, very self-explanatory. Uh, sideboardy, silver, bullety cards. A braid, if you need more creature removal or artifact hate. Cemetery Gatekeeper for graveyard hate in a red deck, which is kind of rare. Uh, Brotherhood's End, sometimes you do need a sweeper for decks that can go larger. Again, also more artifact hate. Goblin Ruin Blaster and Alpine Moon are to hit some of the problematic lands floating around in the format. The the, the big big three that I can think of would be... Like, I guess... Yeah, no, big, big three. Would be like your Maze's End, or even, I guess, a Baldur's Gate. Um, a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx Nick, and your... Um, Mono green devotions, and like in your blue white stifly controls, like your uh, lotus fields of the world, all of all of these can deal with the, those cards in various ways, except for the ruin blaster. I know. Anywho, rampaging ferocidon is basically a way to hose all of the life gain soul sistery style decks floating around. Shatterstorm for the uh, go wide affinity decks that sometimes pop up. And a couple Chandra Awakened Infernos for the counterspell heavy matchups. Anything from those aforementioned blue-white controls to your, like, Demir Rogues. And that is the basics of the list. It's very simple, as you will see. We just play things, go face, rinse and repeat until they die or we lose. Very simple, very fun, and pretty fast. And that's basically it. With that out of the way, don't forget to like the video if you like it, to subscribe if you like my grab bag of content and would like to see more in the future. And if you have any sort of questions like, I don't have X, what about Y? Mono red decks and are like pretty budget friendly and you can get like really good results out of like a list with almost no rares or mythics or even probably list with no rares or mythics. 
So for the most part, if you have to make you know individual judgment calls about X or Y, you'll for the most part, as long as you remind yourself that you're an aggressive deck, you'll be okay. Anywho, with all that out of the way, we'll go on now to game number one. And game number one with our little mono, uh, red deck wins. I was going to say mono red, but that's also true. Again, we get play first because we have a brain. And we'll go ahead and keep this, honestly. Uh, very rarely do I say that like the deck wants a particular type of like mulligan, but I have enough experience with uh, mono red, red decky win decks to know that basically you want two lands, a one drop, and some stuff to do on turn two. And for the most part, anything beyond that is is extra that's like what you're looking for in an opening hand much like this so we'll do a mountain and a soul scar guide since the Kessig wolf rider is in our hand i've had a, some success with this but if you don't have the uh the right the rare floating around for this card i don't beat yourself up over it it's not strictly necessary it's just a fun little card there are loads of lower rarity versions that are will do Lower rarity one drops that will do just fine. Anywho, um, a planes followed by an S for Sentinel tells me nothing, so we're just gonna ramen up ruin and play a couple more soul scar mages. Again, we don't mind paying the life as we are an aggressive deck at our at our core. Again, we have things to do. So it's a soul sisters deck. So okay. Okay, so that is exactly what it is. So we're going to be bringing in some uh, Rampaging Ferocidons. So in the meantime, yeah, just play creatures. I We haven't had the most explosive opener, but like we'll be okay. And they could take block, but yeah, there's less incentive for a Soul Sister life gain heavy deck to even... Well, to even... Um, block at all when you can sort of just like push through it with all of the life gain that you will eventually have. It has to be said we're probably going to lose this first game without our our hate pieces or in this case more glue so we're just going to attack and force our opponent to make trades. They might not even trade they might just take everything maybe take the free block with the Valkyrie to get rid of something. But yeah beyond that I don't see see them blocking terribly much. It has to be said. Yeah, and this this almost certainly it will lose us the game, so we're probably done. I will play this out, especially out if we don't find any of our card draw. Uh, okay, we've lost, but we'll we'll play it out. And, and this moment gives me a moment to talk about all the glue cards, like our draw cards. There are moments like this where. Uh, okay, yeah, it's over. <laughs> I'm not gonna wait, it's fine. I lied. Uh, there are moments like this that if you don't draw any of your draw spells, you're just absolutely done. There, there's no hope. And just to stick around and pretend that there is is foolish on your part. Um, so three Frostons are in all day long. A couple of a braid would be nice. The play with fires aren't gonna hit anything. Uh, the Wolf Riders can go, since we don't want to even be taking the game that long, as that gives our opponent more time to do their, their life gainy stuff. So, pretty happy with our sideboarding plan. Um, depending, because it's, depending on what we draw, this game could be over very quickly. We might, we might actually do three games in this video, where normally we don't do this. Do that, sorry. But the speed of this deck might just facilitate that. Um, I'm going to keep this just because it's like good enough. There's an argument that we should throw it back and like actively look for a one drop. But it's like we're doing okay. Granted, we don't have any of our sideboard cards, so it's like not going to be good. But at the minimum, we can start stopping whatever our opponent plays in the meantime and sort of buy time for us to look. Oh my god, that's so loud. Turn it down a percentage or two. Another speaker. And our 
I mean, we're not drawing any lands, which doesn't help, but we don't really need to. Again, we're just going to stomp and... God, it's the loudest shit on the planet. We need special effects down some and down another percentage. Sorry. Okay, now we're, we really need to draw something. That's something. Okay, that helps. Go ahead and attack, because they're never in a million years going to block this. And to be honest, there's just no reason why they should. Our only hope now is that we draw a land next turn for Chandra, and we can down tick to get rid of the Angel. Because we aren't finding any of our sideboard cards, so it's just not going to be a good look. Okay, that's not exactly what we were looking for, but in a parade will do. Anything to get rid of their Angel until we manage to like look and find our... Uh, Rampage of Jorosidon. And beyond that, yeah, we're just going to keep on applying pressure. Because if we don't attack at all, they're certainly going to win. If left to their own devices, their deck will do goofy things. Just toughness is 3, 5. Okay, okay. Man, that's not great. Not drawing what we need isn't nice. Uh, 6 mana. So if he draws a... Oh my God. There's a land next turn, we're going to be in trouble. Anywho, we'll go ahead and attack. Exert with one of our crop crashers to get through the resplendent angel, since now they can actually block. Yeah, we need yeah, we need a very like particular set of circumstances because he's yeah he's probably just going to swing and activate his thing, and yeah, it's just going to be a whole ass mess. Yeah, that almost single-handedly puts this game, like, out of reach for us, which is, like, really unfortunate. Uh, we'll go ahead and cycle away the Reformation. Eventually got the land that we now can't use. Can't attack. Yeah, that's it. It's over. <laughs> it's, yeah. Okay, that's, to be fair, and like I talked about, and I'm, and this is why I'm going to keep this in the, in the video. Uh... This is an aggressive deck in that if you don't kill your opponent by, like, turn 5 or 6, as evidenced by them having 7 lands, the game's basically over. <laughs> like, you're, you're done. Especially in, in a deck like, or going against a deck like our opponent's uh, mono-white life gain thing. Like, we are especially, like, prone to losing that match because it's basically, like, polar opposites, more or less. <laughs> like, one counters the other, but... In, the other one counters that one, and it's like this weird, like, arms race kind of thing. But still, very fun, and I'm going to keep it in the video because it's like it does a, a really good job of illustrating what the deck is and, like, what its shortcomings are. And, you know, this it, it's an unfortunate thing you're going to run into. You're going to lose games like this where it's just, like, not even close just because they have, you know, they've drawn the nuts. But anywho, on to game number two. And game number two with our little red deck wins list. Again, play first because we have a brain. And this is another really good opener. A one drop, a two drop, two lands, loads of things to do. Can't really ask for much more than that, honestly, in opening hand. So, we'll play a mountain and play our swift spear. One of those lovely little, like, uh, one drops that this deck absolutely adores and needs to make work. Is it some sort of is the spell slinger list thing? In that case, we will go ahead and I think static discharge away their sage. This is one of those insta instances bleh, where we are comfortably using our burn spells to remove things if we need to, since we're gonna it's gonna net us more damage in the long run. Another symmetry sage. Well, what are we doing? We, are we gonna draw? Okay, reckless charge. That that works. Okay. Um, it's about all we can hope to do. In that case, I guess we'll just stomp our opponent's face and keep pushing, since we're actually racing pretty well, which admittedly. It can be attributed to the fact that we went first. What, is he just going to chunk us for another six? Yep, that'll do it. 
It's not gonna go great, but they're not drawing that many cards, though they do have some lands to do that. Uh, I guess we'll do a Bomac Courier. Probably a Bone Crusher. Again, just trying to make our opponent feel a little bit endangered. And if they are, if they do feel endangered, and they decide to not attack with their Symmetry Sage, it'll give us the opportunity to next turn use an Earthshaker Kenra to make their Sage unable to block. In theory, anyway. There's a whole lot in that plan that can go absolutely sideways. Dem what? What? Sure, that's a card. It resolves, I guess. But this is one of those... Okay, so he has to have a removal spell, but even then, I think we, we win, right? I don't think there's anything they do that lets them win. Yeah, we win. Why did they do that? They could have not attacked... What? They were fine. They could have... Okay, sure. Uh, in that case, because I have... A... I'm only doing this because I have a cast X red spells quest. Otherwise, I wouldn't. We're going to Chandra. Okay. I was gonna activate the plus two ramp thing and play the Kinra anyway. But uh, that's fair. That's arguably kind of rude. Um, we'll play some Gatekeepers and some Abrades, since there's a load of X3 cards in there. Play with Fire isn't that useful. Um, Reformation is cute, but oh, we're, the game's not going to go long enough for me to get a whole lot of use out of that. So we can cut down to, like, one. Um, and honestly, weirdly, one Chandra can go down. Oh, hang on, wait a second. No, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Yeah, my brain was overthinking what I was doing. So yeah, we're good. I thought I had cut out and added way more cards than I did. Still, doing pretty good. And honestly, like, there's that moment... There, It's actually sort of... Ugh. Every... Mm, no, mulligan at max, you don't need it. That's better. That's fine. Throw away the expensive thing. I wanted to keep that, but my my brain's like, that's a dumb keep, Max. Don't do that. And we ended up getting at a good place anyway. But um, my original point before that one lander tempted me was that actually this game one of this particular game is actually kind of instrumental in that you have to have this weird... Kind of weird. So it might, might not be the right word. But it's the only way I can think to describe it. You, you have to, like, if you're going to play a mono-red list, there are going to be matchups exactly like this, where in that first game, if I had let up for a single turn, he would have killed me. Because basically, that la that f this first game, this one, came down to one turn away from, like, success or disaster. And I'll go ahead and play so our opponent doesn't sit there and lose their mind as I try and continue my point. If you are going to run a mono red list, you have, and this comes with, I guess, many years of experience of playing the game, and especially of, like, red decks like this, you have to know your limits and know what the deck can and cannot do. Because there are moments where if you falter like that, and like you're like, like, for lack of a better word, your conviction falters, you'll lose. And that's only a thing that can really come with time. But all of that to say. Anywho, now back to the game. We're going to play a Kinra and just, again, go face. We're doing really good. Next turn we can play a Chandra and still play our Kinra, like we were going to do last game. Although we might now do the Chandra and down tech. Because we don't want the Dreadhorde Arcanus doing too much goofy things. Although, we might not have a choice. Eh, okay, we're, this is actually not that bad. Our plan is the same, however. We are going to Chandra and down tick. So we don't, since we don't want the um, Dreadhorde Arcanus to cast anything, whether it's something big with a Reckless Charge buffing it, or something small like a Play With Fire, we're in like a remarkably good spot. And next turn, even he might kill the Chandra, which would suck. I maintain, why the fuck is that in their deck? That's so weird. 
Because, like, that's not even that... I don't think it's that good, but sure. Whatever floats the boat, I guess. Anywho. Okay, that's actually pretty good. In that case, we'll just play a Kinra and go face. Since, with the Abrade in our hand now, for the most part, every single creature that are run in these is it spell slingery list are all like x3s so i don't think we need to worry that much about any creature he plays the card draw like this isn't great but like it's not awful and even then we don't really have even if we had a problem with it we don't have any like methods to interact with it so it's like it's kind of like a tough luck shithead like you don't really have a choice kind of moment uh will he get rid of our Kinra, or is he going to save it? He gets rid of our Kinra, which is good. Let him do that. We might, and we need to draw some glue, or some... Okay, we can do that. That's fine. We'll play a Kinra. Another reason why Kinra is fantastic, it gives us something to do, where if we didn't have a Kinra and just had some other two-dropper that's a little more generic, we might have just played a land and passed and did nothing. Where the Earthshaker Kinra's eternalize ability... It just gives us even more options and, and allows us to continually keep going and applying pressure and not having to like to skip or to miss or at the, at the very least allows cards like the Kinra and their flexibility allow us to if not entirely reduce the amount of weird like skips and stops and in, in that that weird like stop and go thing it cuts down on those about as much as any person could hope for it's not perfect but nothing nothing's gonna be um hmm what do we do he could have one mana card draw he could have another reckless charge but i don't think he wants to do that We would like to keep the Kenra to, like, target... Oh, okay, he did have another Reckless Charge. That's very aggressive. Is that a good kind of aggressive, though? Because you have to attack now. Because there was no reason to do it otherwise. Yeah. 6, 4 to 8. That's better. is better. So I guess we could do a Crop Crasher. And then we can get rid of the Sage here. Retaining our ability for our and Crop to exert next turn to get rid of whatever blocker he might have. Do I die? Did I just die and not think about it on Crackback? I didn't think about the fact that if he plays a land he can double the Reckless Charge, and we might die. I might have fucked that up. Yeah, if he has it, we died, and that was like a very goofy mistake I didn't need to make. But if he had it, he would have just did it. Okay, so he might have it still. Possibly. Maybe. He might still have it. Yeah, we're good. We got it. 100%. In that case, we'll just be polite and, yeah, end the game. <laughs> One of the weird parts about making little YouTube videos like this, not only magic-related, but, but gaming-related, if you are of a similar millennial age like me and sort of grew up with YouTube and, like, gaming on YouTube, that, that weird thing where, like, I don't know about you, but I know there would be times where I would be watching whoever I happen to be watching... And the fact that they couldn't see what I could see as a viewer, as a person who's been doing this for a few years now, I, I infinitely more understand that thing of it's hard to try and like talk and explain and be either entertaining or informative in your own little way and manage to catch everything you need to catch in a game. They're like it'll it'll get you. <laughs> so I apologize to anybody who might have ripped their hair out, but that was honestly a pretty good game, like a really good showing. And this deck is quick enough that I think we're going to do the very rare third game of a Magic video. So anywho, on to that said game number three. And the rare game number three with our little red deck wins list. And now we're on the play, on the draw here and not on the play, which is interesting. 
Okay, this is a one lander that's not even kind of interesting. At least the one lander, the last one lander we showed, was like tempting because we had a load of one drops. That's better. Guess we'll get rid of a mountain. It's fine. I have no idea what our opponent's doing. Ooh, okay, it's a gates deck. We feel okay about this, though it can go either way, because sometimes, you know, it's just it's gonna be rough no matter like how you do it. But we might be able to run so fast that our opponent, shy of them having their gates ablaze, can't really do that much. But we'll see. Um explore or or grow spiral or something was whatever they're probably holding. We're going to actually stomp first, so that if they happen to make their next turn, like, playing uh, a Gatebreaker Ram and passing, we can always retain the Ancrop Crasher to turn off a blocker if we need to. Of course, if our opponent has... Well, his maze is end. Yeah, has their Sweeper. Life is pretty miserable, it has to be said. So in that case, though, we'll just play the, the Ancrop Crasher and just attack normally. Because we're still in a pretty good spot, actually. Oh my god, it's all coming true. <laughs> yeah. In that case, go ahead and exert with one and regular attack with the other, turning off the Gatebreaker Ram from blocking. Next turn, if they don't have some sort of life gain, but they could have like a Plaza of Harmony. But if they... Fuck me, I'm a goddamn prophet. I... Do I care? Because I think I still have lethal, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, we have lethal regardless, which is good. We'll take those. In that case, we'll go ahead and stomp our opponent's face and use our leftover uh, Ancrop Crasher exerted to get through our gate their Gatebreaker Ram for the last three damage. Hell yeah. That was fantastic. Pretty, pretty open and shut. And like we talked about in the deck tech, this is why we bring in all these weird, seemingly weird land hate cards. Uh, play with fire is so weak. <laughs> I love play with fire, but like it's not gonna do that much here. And really, if we can turn off some of our opponents' like long-term game plan options here, like that's much more important. If we can shut off Maze's End and Balder and Balder's Gate, then like we're feeling pretty good. Oh, that's a little too land heavy. That's actually, yeah, we're gonna throw that back. It's a little too much. Yeah, that's fine. We'll throw back a light at the stage. It's not great. We don't love that. That's better. Okay, we'll do a Soul Scar Mage then. This retaining the option to next turn to play a mountain and do the Wolf Rider and the Moon. Wolf Rider. Then we'll play Alpine Moon, getting a Prowess trigger, since every little bit helps. And we will name, um, oh, what's the, the, the Maze's End? Maze's End. Now we will save our other Alpine, Alpine Moon if we can, until they, like, maybe, because, I don't know, I run uh, a Beseju in my versions of Gates, so I can deal with things like this. But granted, not everyone does, so that that's not totally fair. I think, actually, we'll just play an Earthshaker Kenra and attack. Doesn't matter what I target. And then we'll use our last mana here to cast a Spectacle Light Up the Stage. Just in an effort to get some more card draw anywhere we can, honestly. Again, they could have a Sweeper, like that. I am a Prophet. It's crazy. Um, but it's like a thing that's gonna happen no matter what, so like getting uppity about it isn't going to do any good. In that case, a couple one-drops. Go ahead and attack. Again, getting a light up the stage. Since this turn, we're going to lose it anyway. That's better. We'll go ahead and get a den, since we can't do anything else. Still feeling pretty in the driver's seat. And yeah, if they have, you know, their sweepers, like, they're going to have them, but like, you know, if they don't, we're doing remarkably well. In turns like this, where they like kind of didn't do anything, I mean, they drew a lot of cards, granted, so nothing isn't the right word to use, but still very good. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and play Chandra. 
Um, I imagine their deck doesn't have as many answers to Planeswalkers, because I know mine didn't. And I was pretty proud of mine. Throw that land up top. Go ahead and attack. Honestly, it kind of doesn't matter whatever we have in the Bomac, or in under the Bomac Courier. We actually value the Ancrop Crasher more. I maintain there's no reason to run black in these lists. There's no black payoff for gates. Just isn't. Like, there are... I don't know. I mean, I've also caught, like, a lot of shit for bits of my build here and there. So, like, okay, what are you going to do, I guess? Yeah, we're feeling pretty good. Like, I don't think we care, right? Oh, good. Oh, yes, the Grazer. The card that people are like, you need Grazer. Otherwise, it's awful and terrible and doesn't work. Meh. Absolute goofy-ish. Um... I think we will go ahead and... See what we can cast here. Romanov Ruins, we don't mind throwing away, because it was only going to be used for two damage anyway. Uh, we're not going to exert it. We're just going to make our opponent, yeah, chump block with their Grazer. Grazer is one of those weird holdovers from earlier versions of the build that I just, I don't think it, like, holds up. I really don't. Okay, they're going to get life, which stinks. But, like, think about it. Like, with Alpine Moon, if they... Because they're running weird, goofy-ass cards like Arboreal Grazer. They probably don't have an answer for the moon. And, like, yeah, they're going to, like, ramp a whole lot and do a lo whole lot of shit. But they're, I think they're just going to die this turn. Unless I'm tripping. I think I've just got them. Right? Is there... Three... Four... Four... Eight... We could do, yeah, okay, yeah. And we, then we just don't cast whatever we find, regardless. Yep. You're going down. Decline. And then we do a den of the bugbear. Attacking and killing. I, yeah. A, a really, really good showing for this list. And a <laughs> unusually quick video for a historic deck. But every once in a while, you need to go back to like your roots and what you like. And for me, Red Deck Wins is that. It's a deck I'm really good with. I take a lot of pride in my use and my building of it. And, like I sort of brushed on, I believe, in the uh, the deck tech, the, the murders at Karlov Manor, it just has fucking no cards I'm interested in. <laughs> like, nothing is interesting, and the one card that was, after a week of testing, showed itself to be a shit card, and, like, it, it's fun, but it, it's not even remotely good enough. It, like, doesn't even break above the meme thing, sadly. So, yeah, the next few, uh, until the next set, anyway. Uh, the, the next few historic videos will be over, like, the more abstract concepts, or maybe updates to old lists that I've been, like, meaning to do. So, if you're, you know, if you're, you're looking for good historic content, go ahead and stick around and like the video if you like it, and sub if you like me. And if you want to, you know, leave any sort of comments that are nice or somewhat actual, genuine questions, I'll do what I can to respond to what I see. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good day. And, you know, just... Try and be less of a jerk, if you can, here and there. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.